In this video, we're going to be exploring mid-century abstract art. Now, by the mid-century, I mean the middle of the 20th century. This art came out during the 50s, 60s, perhaps even the 70s, and it reflected abstraction often in relatively simple ways. A lot of the art of this era was suitable to be framed as posters and other elements to decorate a home. And today on Mixed Media Masters, we're going to see if we can create something that is reminiscent of that bygone era. Hello makers and welcome back to the studio. This week our media of choice will be cut paper and we're going to go fancy with some color layering and some elements to really pull things together. By the way, if you missed our last cut paper creation video, you can pick it up right around right around here, somewhere around here. For this week's project, we're going to need a piece of paper to build on. We're going to need some scissors or maybe a craft knife and our favorite glue stick. Oh, of course, we're going to need some colored paper to work with. For this piece, I'm thinking of creating a shape that will serve as an anchor that we can build around. I also want to give the shape more dimensionality by adding some analogous colors. I'll talk about what that is. And also creating some complementary colors to peek through. Uh, I guess we'll see what happens here. Uh, one of the greatest things about creating an original artwork is that there are no right answers. Now, when we talk about paper, uh, my paper of choice is the Strathmore. I love the watercolor paper because it has a little bit more texture and it also allows me to uh, just have more to glue on into. It gives me some more texture to do that. So um, not a sponsor, just uh, a, a recommendation because it is a, it is a good paper source. And uh, let's get a big sheet out here. We're going to be working on one of these. I can put the rest of the pad away. All right, so, uh, you know, there's nothing more satisfying to me than a blank sheet of paper. It represents so much possibility. So let's talk about what we can do with this. And uh, again, we're going to be kind of thinking about some sort of a, uh, I want to put kind of a main shape right here in the middle. That's really the objective. And then we're going to figure out how to, how to frame it, if, if you will. Now, when we talk about different colored papers, and again, I don't want to go too deep. We'll have a, a special show that talks all about the papers. But going and picking up, you know, basically cardstock. You can pick up papers like this from Michaels, and Joanne Fabrics has things like this. And, of course, you can buy these things through Amazon and other companies online. And it just, you know, again, I've got some things I've been collecting over the years. Some of this gives you what we call analogous colors, colors that are kind of next to each other in the spectrum. So different shades of, of a different color. I have some gray here. There are some red colors that I'm going to be able to use in this. It's kind of a centralized color. And so what we end up, you know, from a, from a hue is going to change depending upon which piece of paper we're using. So there's a lot of different options. And I encourage you to explore and play around with whatever makes you happy. Again, sometimes you just get a collection of, of uh, paper, almost reminiscent of the construction paper we may have used when we were kids, right? So in this scenario, I'm thinking I want the centralized piece of art here to be uh, kind of a red color. So I'm going to start with, uh, with a bright red to kind of anchor this piece and also draw the eye. So I'm going to go with one of these, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of bright, kind of bright. Now I'm working with an 18 by 24 inch piece of paper here. And so I want to figure out how I can frame things in. And one of the things I'd like to do with this, not necessarily put a large rectangle or square in the middle of it, but something that's a little bit more, I don't know, organic. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just kind of start and, and create a shape that will allow me to create almost kind of like a big red cloud, if you will, kind of a cloudy thing that we might have in here. Let's get that. You guys can see it as well. Yeah. There we go. That's looking okay. Let me dip into here a little bit. No right answer. Again, beautiful thing about art is uh, it is what it is. And uh, there will be times that you'll create something and you'll look at it and say, yeah, not so much. Uh, there will be times that you'll look at something and say, wow, did I do that all by myself? So there's some good stuff in here. All right, let's see what we can do. I'm going to curve it up a little bit here. Uh, all right. Not unhappy with how this is coming out. Not looking for symmetry here. Looking for kind of 
something that's a little bit more organic. But now, if I were to use this, and by the way, when you have your scraps, and you will have scraps, um, sometimes these come in real handy. I have the tendency not to throw a lot of things away. I have a scrap box that I work with. It's actually a, a milk crate full of scraps that I can work with. But I like this. Now, again, when you're playing around with paper, one of the things that's really nice about this media is that, you know, you can turn things around. Like, hey, how about that? Or what happens if I do like this? Okay, and so you can kind of play around with this, say which, which angle here is the one that really draws my attention. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I think this here is not a bad place to start. Let's make sure I get that. So where you guys can see it, that'll be, that'll be good. Thinking I wanna do that. Now, in this particular piece, what I'm also thinking is I'd like to be able to create some sort of portals in here. I'm gonna use a, a utility knife to cut some holes, probably just some square holes in here. And then we're gonna let some other colors peek through. So while this is our foundational color, this red color, I wanna be able to bring some what we call complementary colors through. The complementary colors are gonna be those that complement the red. And usually we'll talk about this at some point in a future uh, breakdown of color composition, but it's usually if you look at a uh, any kind of a color wheel. Well, actually, let me show you, I have a color wheel here. We'll, we'll jump sideways real fast. When you work with a color wheel, what you're dealing with is that are colors that are opposite one another. So for example, if I'm working with yellow orange, the opposite over here on the color wheel is violet blue. And if I say, okay, how about red violet? Well, the opposite is going to be this green yellow color here. And these are really as, you know, as we look at a spectrum of light, these are really opposite things. They kind of, they contrast with each other beautifully. And sometimes we get some really good effects. I mean, green and purple can look really amazing together if we want them to. And as I also mentioned, we can have what we call analogous colors. And analogous colors are those that are a lot closer to each other. We create kind of a spectrum within this area. This isn't quite the same here because this is actually a change in tint and tone, but it's more the, the different colors that are, are similar to one another. So we'll play around with the, both of those elements. But like I said, I wanna have something that can kind of peek through here and make things a little bit prettier. Now, one of the things I wanna make sure, I do wanna build on this piece of paper, but while I'm pulling some pieces together, I certainly don't want the paper to get destroyed, uh, cut up in any, any way. So I'm gonna just move this here. Let's make sure we can get this where you guys can see more of it. And uh, I'm going to grab my utility knife and working here on my cutting mat, which you can see has been well loved. There's, there's paint from previous projects on here. I'm just going to come in here and uh, I'm going to make a, a little bit of a hole here. There we go. That should work nicely. And, uh, you know, no right answer. Maybe I'll put an angle in here just to make it a little bit different. There we go. We want to clean it as, as best we can because again, if we you know have little bits and pieces that are torn off or cut, we're gonna we're gonna notice those. But uh, not hating that so far. So let me do something similar. And again, my decision here is to just kind of align all of my shapes roughly on the same axes. So that means instead of you know making something diagonal in one way, uh, I want to make sure that they're all roughly straight up and down according to what I'm doing here. So that's that's the plan anyway. And I'll put something here as well. And we can vary these in their size. They don't have to be exactly the same shape, certainly. Got kind of an angle happening on the bottom here. And what I'm really trying to do is just create a, a, a number of kind of different windows. Almost think of it like a, you know, a house or an apartment building that has lots of people living in it. And we want to be able to create something that will reflect what's going on in all those houses. Let me finish this cut right here, make it easier to get this off. And again, if you, you know, if you don't have any experience with the utility knife, you know, practice makes perfect here. And uh, the encouragement is just to, you know, not cut yourself. That's always a plus. But just be able to uh, create some lines that you can work with. And there we go. And looks like I can pop that through. And let's see what I want to do here. I think I want to put one right here. And I think I want to have another one down here. By the way, and uh, we can certainly have a discussion on this, but uh, I have friends who are of the belief that odd numbers of things is better than even numbers of things. Now, I suppose, I suppose it depends on what you're doing. If you're trying to create something that's very symmetrical, even works. But if you're trying to create something that's a little abstract, 
I have discovered as well, and would kind of agree that odd numbered things really just bring some different kind of life to it. There's a real difference here. And it, like I said, it's an interesting thing to experiment with. Do I do, you know, six holes? Do I do seven holes? In this case, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know what? I'm going to put a hole right in here. I just want to kind of fill in this area as well. Maybe we'll go with even today. Maybe that's what's going to happen. You know what you can always do? <laughs> Add a hole later if we don't like it. All right. So there we are. We have some holes. All right, now let's create some uh, some some different colors to peek through here. So again, I'm going to go into my scrap bin to a certain degree. Got some good pieces here. There's a there you go. There's a complementary color for red, which would be green. But also thinking maybe some uh, some orange yellow that can uh, that can shine through here as well. What else do I have here in my in my bin? I've got some uh, some purple. Well, that'd be fun. Uh, some brighter yellow that may work. Some uh, some pink, mm -hmm. uh, a teal type of blue, good. And actually, uh, maybe this is more teal or or a purple, a blue green kind of thing. So all I want to be able to do here and make it really simple is I want to create something that I can glue onto the back here that will just shine through. All right. So we have uh, we have eight holes. I'm probably going to need eight different colors to make this happen. And uh, easiest thing to do is just to come in here with a pair of scissors and just create something that will fit on the back of the hole here. Uh, let's start with the yellow. And again, if I come in here and just say, let me just have a, a square of yellow. It doesn't have to be too large to cover up the holes that we've created. We do need a, a little bit of room because we want to glue around it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it down so that when it's glued down tight, it's going to shine through that hole. You see what we're doing here? So I'm going to grab my trusty glue stick. There we go. And by the way, if you, uh, if you want to know more about the different adhesives that we can use in these different projects, I have put together a, a, a video that talks about uh, different adhesives and glues that you might want to check out. So uh, by the way, you can find that link down below here. All right, so I'm going to come back in here. And uh, again, I might want to mark somewhere just to help myself out um, which side I want to be able to glue on. I'm going to glue on this side here. So I'm going to grab my glue stick and I'm going to paste a, around the hole and try not to get it on the hole in the sense it's not going to make a big difference, but you just don't want to scrape your glue stick across the hole and have a lot of glue end up there. Okay. But it's, that's it. Just put some, some adhesive in there. And now when we check in, you can see there's a little bit of glue that will, that will dry and will disappear. So I'm not too worried about that. So there's some yellow. That's kind of nice. So uh, let's take a little bit of green now. And again, let me just grab a square and grab a square. And uh, the real the real question is, where do we put it? I think I'm going to put that right here. No, right, no right answers. No wrong answers. All right, get some glue around that. And let's paste that down. And again, you might want to just make sure you push that firmly so it doesn't end up falling off later. And again, I don't know if you can see it, but because of the, uh, the glue stick I'm using, the purple, that purple disappears and becomes transparent when it's no longer has any water in it. So when this dries, it'll get rid of it. So I'm seeing a little bit of purple in the corner there, and uh, that will go away. I'm not worried about it. So that looks pretty good. Um, let's come in here. Let's hit some pink in here. And uh, again, I'll just grab a corner right there. Sometimes I try to reuse the other parts that aren't going to be very useful. Um, I'm going to put the pink right up here at the top. How about that? Just put that around there and push that into place. All right. How are we doing? All right. It's subtle because it's, uh, it's backed up against the red here, but uh, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I'm thinking a blue color would go really well there. So let's... Uh, Let's look at our collection. I'm going to use this uh, this blue here, and let me just take a chunk of something that's really not going to help anything else in the world, and I can trim this up into a square, and that should be sufficient. And again, glue that down. Glue that down, and I'll put that right in there. Oops, my pink is trying to. Raise from the dead here. All right. And 
sometimes. Sometimes when you're working on pieces, you got to be a little patient and give it some time to, to glue down before you start moving it around a little bit. But for the purposes of what we're doing here today, this will be uh, sufficient. And again, I'm going to grab some of this golden rod here. Let me uh, square this up. Okay. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Would it look good there? And again, I can test it. All right, there's some yellow there. I have a yellow block up there. I don't think I want to put them that close together. I think I'm going to put it down here at the bottom. So this will be our hole of choice. Let me go and put that in like that. Good. Okay. And glue that guy down. All right. I can, uh, now I'm going to need to have another, another color somewhere. Let's get some purple in here, though, since I have it. I'll just use this scrap. And do what I do. All right, and uh, I'm going to put that down in this corner. So it's going to be this one right here. And this will be purple. Glue that into place. Good stuff. All right. We're getting some nice shine through. Now, what do I want to do in here? And here, I have two more to go. And again, I want to kind of balance things out the best I can. One of the things I'm going to grab one of my packages of paper here. And let's just see if we can uh, find a color that's, I don't know, interesting that we might want to, might want to drop in here. And again, what I do is uh, entirely up to me. Ooh, that, that sky blue would pop nice. So that's one option. Got a lighter pink there too. Bright yellow. All right. Uh... And an orange. You know what? Let's try. Well, let's try. To, might not show up very well. That's one consideration. We actually the other ones. But the sky blue. I'm going to go with this because I think the sky blue down in this lower corner can make a make a difference here. So let's go and grab a corner. And let's get that in place. So that's going to be this guy right here. And when you're working a project like this, you'll find that your glue sticks off <laughs> rolling away from you. So. Creating something, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe I should create some sort of a basket to drop my glue stick in. So it's always it's always where I'm looking for it. We'll uh, figure that out in another day. All right, so that is one thing. Now I have one last color, which is kind of a, this blue-green. And again, it contrasts really well with the red. And I think I might just drop it in that last location here. So let me grab a chunk here. That should be sufficient, and this should uh, fit in that, that hole there. Again, make sure you are pasting the right side. Beauteous. Okay. Oh, look at how nice that came out. So again, we're just kind of playing around with some ideas. And it's really about a combination of, of color and form and what we can do when we match these things up to one another. So that's a, that's a good start. Now, let's uh, just move some stuff out of the way here, get myself room and bring my piece of paper back in. Let me cap my glue for the time being. We'll need that later for sure. But uh, we'll bring this back in. And now, if I were to take my piece and again, uh, <laughs> remember which was up. Here we go. This is how I see how that's how that's coming together. Well, oh, let me move that so you guys can see it a little bit better, right? So this is really, you know, what we're trying to accomplish at this point is something that will kind of hold this space. Now, one of the things I'm also thinking about is this red by itself is a little two-dimensional. And one of the things we can do to make it a little bit more interesting, so I'm gonna go back to my red palette here. And I'm going to go, and I want to go down a, a, a color a shade, if you will. And uh, let me just play around with this idea. If I had a, a shape of some sort underneath this that was kind of peeking out, how would that do? Would that really enhance this to a certain degree? And you know what? I think the answer is yes. So I'm going to try to do something very similar. I'm going to create kind of, a again, another organic shape out of this new red piece. And I want it to serve as a bit of a backdrop. And of course, I don't want them to necessarily match each other. I want them to be 
you know, have an interrelationship. So let's just see what happens here. I'm gonna I'm gonna trim this in a similar way. I'm just not gonna go as far from the edge. We'll get the square edge off of here. And again, let's make sure we oops, we need to clean that up. And sometimes you just, you know, you let the materials guide you. Sometimes it's just, you know, I'll put my scissors on autopilot and just say, all right, talk to me. What, uh, what do you think would be kind of interesting here? So I'm just going to create something. Again, I'm not looking for symmetry to any great degree, although I think this is coming out in a <laughs> fairly symmetrical way. Well, we'll put some variation in. And again, we can come back and make cuts to it later if there's something about it we just, we don't love, right? Anything we're creating has a lot of flexibility, has a lot of flexibility to be changed. All right, so now if I take this piece that I've just cut and I put it in behind this, again, you can kind of see the interrelationship between the two pieces. And it can be really interesting. It can be really, really interesting. Not only the colors, which are, you know, again, kind of working this space together, but the shapes of, the, of these pieces of paper are starting to really come into play here. And again, I'm going to want to think about, you know, is this going to sit in the center of my page? Is it going to be in the upper quadrant? Is it going to be in the lower quadrant? What am I looking for? And I think in this case, I'm going to be looking at something that's in the upper quadrant. And so we can make that happen, right? So one of the things I do before I, you know, do any final paste down is I may look at my piece and say, are there any rough edges or any things when I cut that I don't love? Looks like a little piece right here. Don't, I don't love it. So I can trim that. Again, is there anything else here that's, yeah, I got a kind of a point right here I don't love. I'm just gonna smooth things out a little bit. Yeah, not so bad, not so bad. And all right, gonna remember which uh, which my top is and uh, actually I have my bottom piece here. I have a little, a little place where I wanna just pick it up a little bit. All right, there we go. So there we go. I think it's looking pretty good. Now, we need to think about how we're going to get our background in here. And again, you know, there's no right answer. There's absolutely no right answer on how we're going to do any of this. And I'm just looking, you know, again, I could rotate the shape in here if I want, you know, and even offset it. I mean, there's nothing to say I couldn't create something that looks like that. So play around with it. Get a sense of what the pieces are trying to, trying to do with each other. And uh, like I said, it's very weird sometimes when you create something like this where your brain just goes, ooh, right there, right there. All right, so I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more till my brain says, yay, that's what we want. Uh, keep, keep experimenting. I kind of like that, I kind of like this. All right, so in this case, what I wanna do is I want to be able to, um, I'm gonna bring this piece up a little bit closer to the top of the page. And I'm gonna take this to the side and uh, so it doesn't get damaged. And I wanna focus on pasting this bottom piece down. Now. When I'm pasting, I don't necessarily want to paste on my piece of paper because, again, I get a lot of extra glue on there and it may just mess it up a little bit. So oftentimes what I'll do is uh, I'll work on my on my cutting mat here, um, or I may just work with a with a just a sheet of copier paper, right? Something that you don't mind getting glue over and perhaps just throwing away later. And so I'll put that down and uh, I'll make sure that I, you know, get the edges. Now the objective here when we're gluing that a large piece like this is to get as good a coverage as we can because we certainly don't want this piece coming off in the future. So glue stick, here we go. I'll just bring it out a little bit and I'm going to start, uh, yeah, I'm going to put some lipstick on this thing. That's what we're doing. And let me just get in here. But again, I'm going to work over my scrap paper so I don't get glue everywhere. You know, and sometimes I've, I've glued on my uh, on my cutting mat more than once, and well, it works after a while. You have to go wash your cutting mat. So, now you want to get as, as smooth a, a a layer in here as you can. You want to work fairly quickly as well, because once you start putting the glue on here, it starts to dry almost immediately. But uh, like I said, I don't want this uh, back piece to be coming off this uh, this piece of watercolor paper anytime soon. So let's get in here. And uh, and by the way, it's always it's always handy to have a couple of glue sticks uh, 
in uh, lying in wait because you can go through these fairly quickly when you are gluing up large pieces like uh, like this. So, all right, let me uh, let me get that in the frame there. Yeah. So again, you uh, you you might want to have uh, multiple glue sticks uh, just in case you run into a situation where uh, <laughs> you run out of one. That happens more than often than you think. Uh, that's why I buy them in bulk. All right. So we got a pretty good glue down on here, and I'm gonna get my glue sheet out of the way so I don't end up sticking it onto anything. And let me get this uh, main piece of paper back into place. And I'm gonna take, and again, you know, the thing about glue sticks is they are somewhat forgiving. If I wanna move things a little bit after I try to paste it down, I have some flexibility. If you're using like a two-part adhesive, like a spray adhesive, forget it. Once it goes down, it's pretty much staying down. So you're gonna have to make sure you make your, your mind up. But this looks pretty good uh, for me. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna smooth it down. And let's get our edges there. And again, we wanna make sure this is pretty secure to the piece of paper that we're pasting it on, our watercolor paper. Excellent. I think it looks pretty good, pretty good. All right. So let's, uh, let's talk about what we want to do next. And that is let's come back and get our, our top creation and figure out how that's going to come in and, and fit in here. And again, I have one thing I want to clean up a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of, of white showing through this particular construction paper is actually, it's more of a painted paper, if you will. And so sometimes you can see the white paper. Sometimes I like the effect and sometimes it just gets in the way. It gets a little, looks a little messy. All right, so I don't hate that. So again, let me uh, let me just move this out of the way and let me go work on my gluing sheet again. And let's get, this is now gonna be our, our gluing piece. So I'm gonna get the piece in here. And again, let me uh, get this where you folks can see. And we'll do that. And again, you wanna be careful you don't tear off any of the things you already glued on, so. Going to get in here and again make sure we have pretty good adhesion so this is going to stay where we put it forever and ever okay so a lot of glue a lot of glue on this one and again sometimes you know depending on what your what your objective is you may say a glue stick is really kind of underpowered for the job you may go with some sort of uh um, pvc a uh, pv uh, what am i talking about the pva glue polyvinyl acetate like elmer's glue and you can use a paintbrush to spread things around makes it a, makes it a little easier to get uh, wide coverage all right so once again uh just remembering that my pink color is the up color so i'm going to grab this and kind of center it in here best i can looks like we're going to be totally within the dark red. There we go. And let me get that secured down. All right, kind of cool, kind of cool. Again, you know, we, we're making this up as we go along. We don't necessarily know what's gonna happen, but the good news is we're gonna be the first ones to see uh, what the masterpiece looks like when it's, uh, when it's all done. So what I wanna do now is, is something to kind of, this is almost like a cloud, isn't it? And I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's a cloud that <laughs> it's a rain cloud, but I'm thinking something that could really frame up this image, right? Because just sitting by itself, it, it doesn't look terrible, but I think something that kind of frames it and gives additional contrast. One of the things I've been thinking about is using some darker colors. Let's see if I can pull them out of my pile here and uh, pulled a few scraps here. And I'm thinking, you know, nothing like a, like a darker gray color to really, again, pop this red. Because with all this white here, the white is very bright and the red is very bright. But if we start to obscure the white with this gray color, then it's gonna give us an opportunity to really pop the red out even more and really be a, a major focal point. Now, do I wanna just take a big chunk of gray and, and drop it in the middle of what I'm doing here? Not necessarily. But what I'm thinking is almost kind of like rain from a rain cloud. I'm thinking these kind of bands that can kind of come in here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix up a couple of different grays. So we have some contrast within the grays as well to make it a little bit more interesting. And I've got some of the same colors here. Now I'm gonna show you one of my favorite tools in the whole world. I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna take this piece and, and again, put it out of harm's way for, for the moment. We'll just tuck it up here in the top of my cutting mat. Uh, but uh, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about cutting 
And uh, right here is a rotary cutter. Now, a rotary cutter is just that. It's a wheeled, it's basically a razor blade that's in a wheel, and it's used predominantly for cutting fabric. So if you're a quilt maker, you're probably familiar with this, but it's simply just almost like a pizza roller where it allows you to go in and, and cut your stuff. And so one of the things I like about working with a, uh, with a rotary cutter, especially when I want to make something like strips, okay? And I'm thinking I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this into thinner strips, and these thin strips that I, are going to give me smaller pieces that I can work with. So one of the things I'm going to do is show you one of my other favorite and uh, go-to tools. And it's funny, you just start thinking about what are the tools that I, I use all the time, all the time in almost every project. And the other tool I use is my OmniGrid two-foot ruler. Now, this, again, is a great quilting tool because it allows you to put your fabric down and see where you are, but it has the built-in ruler, and it just makes it real easy to create a straight edge. This is probably about an eighth of an inch or so thick, so your your blade will stay against it to a certain degree. And uh, let me move this out of the way so I don't cut it accidentally. And I'm just going to go and create some strips in here. And the thought is... Uh, I don't know, maybe about half inch strips. Oh, let me just measure this out and get a sense. Yeah, about half, three eighths to half an inch of strip. And again, irregular is gonna make this a lot more interesting than if everything is uniform. So I'm gonna take my, uh, my cutter and I'm just gonna, again, be careful. You pop your blade out here and just roll it next to my ruler. And there we go. Now, so now I have a strip. I'm gonna make a bunch of these because I wanna be able to then cut these into smaller pieces and I'll show you what we'll do with that. So give me a second to cut away here. And I'm not sure how many we're gonna need, but uh, I'm gonna grab a bunch. I think it's gonna, it's gonna be a lot, of, a lot of small piece cutting coming our way. Three days later. Uh, and there we are. We, we have strips. We have lots and lots and lots of strips. So what I want to be able to do with these strips now is to chunk them down even further. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a small pile of these like this. I don't know, seven or eight of them. And let me get them lined up in the, into a stack, if you will. And I'm going to stack and whack, basically. So this is just a, a much faster way for me to cut out a lot of small pieces uh, all at one time. Let me just get these down here. So I basically have just a, a row. And again, I'm going to use my rotary cutter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to cut through a few of these. And so I'm going to make a lot of small pieces. I don't know if you can see them there, gray against gray. But uh, again, that's, that's what I'm in the business to do right now is to create some gray pieces, which will be the foundation for the next part of what I want to do here. And I'm going to make a, I don't know, I don't know if I need all of these. We'll find out. And I'm keystoning them a little bit. It's almost like going to be a mosaic that we're going to make with paper when these are all done. We may have a few pieces that work beautifully, and we may have some we say, no, nope, that's not going to work. But again, be careful while you're doing this. If you are using a rotary cutter, please. Uh, I should probably knock on something wood. I've been very fortunate in my career. I've never gashed myself with this guy. Um, a few a few near misses, I believe, but uh, I'm always respectful, always massively respectful of how sharp this blade is, and I find that helps. All right, let me... Uh... All right, and uh, I'll take that. So there we are. I'm going to use this as a starting pile, and again, I may have to come back and, uh, and create some things in the... I have a container. Let me... Uh, a little dish, my little uh, my little paper, paper pieces dish here that I can work with. And I'll show you how we're going to set this up. This is going to take a while to go through, most likely. So I'm going to fast forward through the uh, through the boring parts of, of me doing a lot of gluing, but we'll get to see what the final is going to look like here. Let me get my my piece back in front of me. Okay. So again, what I'm thinking here is creating some sort of a, uh, I don't know, some interrelationship. We'll just have these pieces kind of almost raining down from the cloud. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just going to kind of line these up. And I have some darker ones and some lighter ones. And I'm just, I'm randomly putting them in there. I'm not going to spend a lot of time worrying about 
what color goes where. You know, I may play with the shape. What I am gonna figure out is, is there kind of a natural border that I don't wanna go past? And so for example, I might leave about an inch or so here on the edges. One of the things I wanna be able to do is sign my piece of art, which I usually do in the lower right-hand corner. So I don't know, I'll, I'll play around with that. But again, if I come in here and put another row next to it, it's gonna allow me, again, to get kind of this effect that I'm going for. And uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to lay some things out first, All right. Once I have things laid out, then I can, I, I have the flexibility of being able to come back in here and, uh, and, and tweak them as I need to. And I'm going to lay them out and then I'm going to tweak them a little bit. And then it's time to come for the glue up and I'll show you what that's going to look like. So let me, uh, let me get these guys laid out for you. And when I'm done with that, we'll come back and I'll show you where we have arrived. Two weeks later. All right, so finally, finally, it takes a while, but everything is laid out here. And actually, I'm pretty happy with the results. Now, one of the things I'm thinking about is I might shift things a little bit over here to the right-hand side, but for the most part, I like what I've done here. I will share with you, I cut a few other pieces here of these tiles, let's call them, and uh, made them a little bit shorter, and that just helps break things up a little bit so everything wasn't roughly the same length. And I think it looks good. It staggers it out. And again, you know, we're kind of fighting symmetry to a certain degree here with the abstraction of what we're doing. But uh, what we need to focus on now is uh, these pieces are still loose, right? So I've, I've just kind of laid them where I think they should go, but they're, we, we, we need to glue them down. And uh, of course, this is where our handy dandy uh, glue stick is going to come in. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. That's a lot of little pieces. And so while I can grab said glue stick and let a little come out the end here, what I end up doing is kind of just grabbing a piece and maybe rubbing a little bit of glue on the back of it and pasting it down. And uh, while that can take forever and a day, one of the things I've discovered that really can help this process along is just kind of planning ahead about what we want to do. So let me focus over here on, on this side. I'm going to move the pieces I want to glue out of the way and I shove them over here all the way to the right hand side. So let me just get a moment to go over here. There we go. And again, this is an opportunity for me to kind of adjust things that I don't really love as I'm going down through. I don't like these two short pieces next to each other. That's, we'll take, we'll fix it. We can do that. We have the power. I have a spare right there. There we go. I think it looks better. All right. And all right, so that's kind of what I want to be able to have uh, this row look like. But this row is going to end up in where this blank space is here now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue stick and I'm going to start laying down a trough, if you will. I'm just going to kind of do one of these to, uh, to give myself a glue path. And this is where that purple comes in real handy. I can see where my glue is. And I'm just going to move my pieces and slide them over and give them a press. And again, we don't want to do this crazy quickly because we do want to give uh, us an opportunity to be able to get into the glue while it's still adhesive. And if we do this, and you know, if I glue the whole thing up, by the time I get to some of the stuff, the glue is dry. You can already see it's starting to fade down here. So don't want that to be the problem. Now, the thing is, you can still see purple in here. And while that may, you know, may not be what we want to have as a permanent thing, the simple reality is that that's going to fade shortly. And again, one of the things I'll mention here is if you put a lot of glue in here, sometimes even after it dries, if you look at it from certain angles, you can see a sheen on it. So I try to avoid just super saturating anything I'm doing with too much glue. That might be, that might be enough there. And uh, I'm going to push this stuff into place. There we go. Looking awesome. A little bit more down here. And this just makes the whole gluing process, as you can imagine, a lot faster. And, uh, well, you know, I don't hate gluing things down. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I get bored easily. And so spending, you know, hours of my life gluing little pieces of paper down on things, yeah, that's not necessarily where my bliss is. Let's get a few more. Got some spares still to drop in here. That's a good one. Uh, let's get another one right there. And I think we have room for one more. Let me just, probably can't see this. I'm sure I'm off camera at this point, but I have a, another little piece down here that is, uh, I don't want to be able to glue it right there. And right, I'll turn that a little bit so it matches its brethren. So there we are. Now, one of the things I want to be able to do is make sure that these pieces actually adhere. I'm going to show you a tool that I use. I'll grab the, uh, 
the smaller version of it, but it's basically, it's a platen ruler. So this is used for printmaking and it's really used for picking up ink and putting on, on a flat surface. But I find it works really well if you want to press things down. So I'm going to come back here to my piece of artwork and I'm just going to run it over the pieces that I've glued down so far. And this just presses it firmly into the glue. And I find this makes a big difference, um, you know, especially with lots of little pieces. There's always a possibility in the future, you didn't glue something really well enough. It just got a little bit of adhesion and the piece is being moved or being put into a new frame and a piece falls off. And we don't want our pieces falling off if we can help that. So that's gonna make that work for us. So we have the first row glued down here, and I'm gonna go through here and, and run the similar process for everything else here. Now, I don't need to bore you with uh, however long it's gonna take me to glue, glue everything here. So we'll uh, speed through this, but I want you to just get a sense of, again, take your time, pace it, think about the balance of colors and shapes and what you wanna be able to do here while you're making the process happen. But really, it's just a matter of just making sure all these little gray pieces get glued down and uh, we'll take it from there. So I'll speed this along so uh, we can get through this quickly. we are. Now, as you can see, it takes a while to get through all of these pieces being glued down. And I'm going to encourage you to give it some time to dry. As you do, the purple of color, of course, will leave us and it won't be a problem. In some cases, you might find a little bit of a glue squeeze out or something that looks a little bit discolored. And simply, you can take your utility knife and just go in and, and do a little scrape, just kind of, you know, Pull some of that glue off if you need to. Um, a, a sponge with a little bit of damp on it. Sometimes if you dab at things, you can pick up the, the paste that way as well if you really want to clean things up. And again, unless your you know, nose is pressed straight to this, most people are never going to see these tiny little imperfections. But do what you, uh, do what you need to do to feel comfortable. Now, I like this piece. Um, I'm happy with this. By the way, if you've created one of your own, good for you. That's why I'm here. I want you to feel confident to say, look, I got some colored paper, I got some glue, I got something to cut with, I can make my own artwork. So, hey, it's uh, well, welcome to the club. See, being an artist isn't uh, as crazy hard as you thought it was gonna be. Now, I like this piece, I like this piece. By the way, not every piece you create, you're gonna look at and go, mm, that's awesome. Uh, sometimes you're gonna say, well, that was a learning experience. But in this instance, I am really confident that this is a, a good enough piece uh, that I would hang in my home, and I'm gonna put this up on my gallery. So if you go and look at the links down below, you will see a link to the Spectiva Studios Gallery. That's my gallery. And I'm gonna put this piece up. I haven't figured out a name for it yet, so that will, that will be disclosed most likely by the time you see this video. I will sign this, I will get this in a frame. And if you're interested in purchasing this piece, I will be also providing down below a special discount code that is only known to the people who have watched this video. So if somebody comes into my gallery without having seen this video, they're going to pay full price. You guys are going to get a big discount, whoever wants to pick this piece up if you do. All right. So I'll put all that information down below, along with any links for some of the materials we use in the creation of this project. If you want to be able to uh, do your own art and want to know where to pick up some of the stuff, I'll give you some pointers, some clues as to where you can pick up and, and source these materials. But there we go. So we have our mid-century art uh, masterpiece. It's a, it's a pretty good looking piece. It's gonna hang uh, beautifully in somebody's home and really draw people's attention and be a conversation starter. So all good things and give you something that 
will just make you feel good when you look at it. Anyway, that's all we have for this uh, this week. And I appreciate your time and attention being with me. And again, if this is the kind of thing you enjoy watching, please hit the subscribe button. And if you really like this video in particular, please hit the like button. It really helps us out, gets our, our channel seen by other people, which is what we want to do. We want to share the love. We want people to get out there and really discover the lo love of abstract art. So that's all I have for this week. I'm Spider. Thank you so much for dropping by, and I'll see you next time.